welcome back to another recap of Insecure Season 4. And right now we are on Episode 7. Before we actually get into the recap of Episode 7, I do have a follow-up from my last recap. I mentioned that, you know, it would be great if these episodes would be longer. But it looks like Issa is not having that. Someone else uh, who's following her on Twitter actually said the same thing. And she came back with the real clap back. Okay, so yeah, the answer to that is a hell no. May we continue? <laughs> In episode seven, Molly and Andrew are embarking on their first ever vacation and they're going to Mexico. This episode really makes me wanna to go to Mexico even more. It's always been on my bucket list. But after looking at the beautiful location, the amazing nightlife, I really want to go. I want to make it a 2020 vacation, you feel me? With the girls, maybe a future boo. <laughs> Will that ever happen <laughs> in 2020 with COVID-19 around? Damn it. I do wish that they would have changed Molly's hair for this episode, like braids or something for their vacation. I'm kind of tired of seeing that kitty cat bob wig she's wearing. Uh, they tried to change up the wig by making it a little curly, crunchy. They did little two little braids on the side at one point, but I really wasn't buying it. This episode starts off where we left off in episode six. We see Issa decide not to go in the restaurant that Molly's in. However, we don't realize until episode seven that Molly actually did see Issa. So that whole texting that she was doing in Bliss, was just an act, which was rather whack. I'm wondering why didn't Molly extend herself in confronting Issa? It does seem like Molly is always expecting Issa to approach her first or to apologize first. Right when she saw Issa, she was like, oh, here we go, and then pretended not to notice her. So honestly, I think Molly deserves Issa to basically avoid her. Then at the end of that scene, the song comes on. Bitch, suck a dick and die. Little bougie ass bitch. Bitch, suck a dick and die. Little basic ass bitch. I'm like, who were they talking about when they were playing that song? Issa or Molly? And that song happens to be by Chris O'Bannon, who is an up and coming artist, I think from the Bay Area. And uh, this episode really put me on to him and he's definitely part of my playlist now. So I love how Insecure does that. I love how the show puts on musicians that I've never heard of before. A lot of people on social media had something to say about the way Molly talked to her assistant in regards to her assistant telling her about this meeting at the last minute. And the meeting was the same day, the same morning of Molly's flight to Mexico with Andrew. Honestly, I don't think it was that bad. It isn't a good look for Molly to be unprepared for her meeting and an assistant is there to make their boss's life easier. When you make a mistake, it makes me look dumb. And you don't get paid to make me look dumb. Her assistant messed up. Molly had to put her in check professionally while still being very down to earth. And I feel like her assistant took it like a champ. 100%. I'm sorry. I promise it won't happen again. So I do not think this scene fits the black, the angry black woman stereotype. A lot of people are trying to make this scene perpetuate that stereotype, and I really think y'all need to try again. <laughs> I've gotten the finger pointed in my face at work, way worse than that, by superiors who I did not share the same race with. And that's pretty much all I have to say about that. Plus, Molly was rushing to make her flight, so it was just bad timing all together. On the plane in Basic Economy Plus, we meet Kim Fields. Now, if you don't know her, you should, all right? She starred in cult classics like Living Single and in The Facts of Life. She even had a season on The Real Housewives of Atlanta with her husband. She's on this episode playing a passenger on Molly and Andrew's flight named Mabel, 
who is a recent divorcee who's embracing her newfound freedom. I gave Henry 25 years and I'm taking them all back. She doesn't stay free for long, no, because by the end of the trip, when they're back at LAX at baggage claim, you find her kissing up on some man. Come to find out this man in reality is Kim Seal's husband. <laughs> it seems like she's always putting her husband on, always trying to make a way for Bay. Even uh, on Housewives of Atlanta, she had him tap dancing, like literally tap dancing. And what do you guys think about Molly and Andrew trying to live the mile high club life in Basic Economy Plus? You know, the little canoodling they were doing under the blankets. My friend said it was stupid. I think it would have been better if it was a nighttime flight. It seems like Molly and Andrew really went in on sexually exploring each other this uh, vacation. Molly told Andrew she happened to like what happened on the airplane because she likes the fact that people could be watching. And I can understand that. Andrew told Molly he likes a woman to take charge. And it seems like Molly should be good at that. And who was Andrew expecting to use those toys on? Was it for Molly or was it for him? And it seems like this season there is a lot of focus on butt play. And I just want to know what's up with that. But that scene where Andrew was hitting Molly from the back on the balcony in Mexico, that was everything. Okay, I'm sure everyone's had that fantasy. <laughs> Jay Ellis, who plays Lawrence, directed this episode, and right now it's just making him look like a big old freak. Sometimes it's very hard for me to believe Molly's sexuality just because Yvonne, who plays Molly, she revealed that she is a virgin. And to this day, at 36 years old, she is still a virgin, uh, which is very commendable it still makes it hard for me to believe that Molly could be that sexual. In Mexico, we meet Andrew's brother, Victor, and his sister-in-law, Lydia. Speaking of freaks, Andrew's brother just seems like a big old control freak. And I also didn't understand why Lydia was giving Molly so many compliments right off the bat. Andy, you did not tell us Molly was a fucking 10. I'm texting my trainer. And Molly, I know you're going to look so fucking hot in your swimsuit. I'm going to want to kill myself. <laughs> uh, it seems like that happens a lot when minorities are the minority in a group. It almost was like Lydia was trying extra hard to make Molly feel comfortable. And sometimes it just seems like all those compliments right off the bat are like a nervous tick or something. And then on the other hand, Lydia could have just had a big major girl crush on her, which is possible. <laughs> Should I be concerned about Lydia? Is she gonna try and fuck me later? In the pool, Lydia mentions Victor and Andrew's sister, Fiona. And it seems like Fiona was mentioned twice throughout this season so far. The first time was when Molly tried to bring her up during dinner with Andrew. And then the second time is now on this trip and it's starting to seem like Fiona could be a wild child. And it's just making me curious about her character. Maybe they'll bring her in this season or next season? We'll see. The key card and towel situation made the vacation take a turn. When I initially saw the episode, I agreed with Molly. From first glance, it did look like the towel attendant gave the white couple that came before Molly towels without asking them for their key card. Then a member of this uh, insecure Facebook group page that I'm following said to me, well, we all we see is the white couple taking the towels. We don't see anything else. So we really don't know whether or not the towel attendant asked the white couple for their key card. Now I'm like, was the towel attendant doing her job and Molly just being oversensitive? Whatever the answer is to that, I don't think it should take away uh, from Molly's feelings being valid. Just her climbing the corporate ladder, I'm sure she has experienced racism. So her guard might be up and I feel like as viewers, we need to cut her some slack. 
I do feel like she shouldn't have let the emotions linger when she got back into the pool though. I feel as though she could have continued having fun and probably talked about it later with Andrew, right? I think if she did do that, the whole awkward moment with Victor could have been avoided. However, things like that need to be discussed when embarking into an interracial relationship, even with family members that are relevant in that interracial relationship. While Jay Ellis directed this episode, Asian American writer Jason Liu wrote it, and I think that was very beneficial, especially when it comes to this awkward scene between Molly and Victor. I feel as though Molly and Victor both made some interesting points. You don't think I experience racism? I do, and it sucks. But how I react to it is my choice. You don't have to give it so much power. That's easy for you to say, you only consider yourself people of color when it benefits you. In my opinion, both their points have some validity. One thing for sure, it is very hard to have a conversation like this when you're the only black person among the people you're having the conversation with, especially if those people all share the same ethnicity. The convo was definitely a mood killer for Molly and Andrew. Another mood killer for Molly and Andrew was whenever Issa was mentioned in the episode without even actually being in the episode. For example, when Andrew returned Nathan's call, you can hear Issa in the background, which definitely almost killed the vibes for Molly and Andrew. Oh shit, is that a Skippy? Yep. Molly was quick to assume that Issa was being messy by getting back with Nathan again. And then Molly was also quick to assume that Nathan was an asshole when things didn't work out with Issa the first time. And that's when Andrew had to put her in check. He was dealing with some shit, like mental health stuff. But is Issa on this trip? I just want to point out the fact that Issa is such a good person that she didn't even share that with Molly, who's her best friend. She didn't share that information about Nathan because it wasn't her place to share. Can we just let that sink in for a second? Can we just let that revelation sit for a moment? And speaking of revelations, it seems like this trip made Molly have one. She actually called her therapist to set up an appointment because she came to terms with a flaw about herself. I've kind of been having a hard time letting go of things recently. And uh... this episode is called Low Key Tripping for a Reason. Not only did Jay Ellis direct this episode, he also found a way to get actor credit in this episode by bringing back Lawrence at the end of this episode. When Molly and Andrew return to LA, they see Lawrence at the airport and he's coming back from San Francisco. Rumor has it that he was there for a job interview. We'll see. This is the first time that Andrew and Lawrence have met this whole entire show, which is very interesting to me since Andrew is the bestie of Issa's ex, Nathan. I said this already in one of my past recaps, but I'm gonna say it again. I swear that Issa, Nathan, and Lawrence are gonna go through some type of love triangle before the, all of this is said and done. Like, I put money on that. <laughs> and Jay Ellis might even try to make that happen before he leaves the show for good. I know a lot of people wonder why Lawrence is still on the show anyway. Some people are saying that they don't believe he can even carry a storyline on his own, which is very funny, but I don't necessarily agree with. I think Lawrence could definitely carry a 30 minute episode with his boys like Chad, who's hilarious as I don't know what. Uh, I think they can definitely keep us entertained for 30 minutes. Right at the end of the episode, we hear Lawrence on the phone inviting someone for a drink. Now, if you watch the promo of episode four, then you know that person he was on the phone with is in fact Issa. So we'll see how that conversation goes. Until next time.